Design Squad. Welcome back to this episode of To Master for Sketch. In this specific episode, I'm going to introduce you to shapes. And shapes is one of the most important functionality in Sketch because that's where you start crafting custom uh, components, custom icons, custom that, you know, everything what you could create something out of a basic shapes. I don't know, like just from a human nature, you usually identify different things based on their contours, their shapes. And I just read an interesting study with uh, uh, kids who were grown on Pokemon um, and they were identifying different Pokemons based on their silhouettes are much more, you know, it, it's just easier for them to know exactly which Pokemon is in the distance and, and just identify it. So it just works that way where that we're primed to see shapes, contours, and you know negative space and white space and then identify what it is so in this specific session i'm going to show you how to create a few icons and how to shape functionality specifically because in sketch you can go any way you wish you can use predefined icons you can use just you know components here and there use the basic set of shapes but it's always good to know how to play with vectors so you can make custom different bits and so I'm going to show you how to make three icons and specifically for UI design. So one is going to be menu icon, then personal icon, let's say like a account badge. And the third one is going to be sound like almost like a volume icon or volume button icon. Um, and so let's jump right into it. So in shapes in sketch are quite simple. So you have a basic set, but most of the time you're going to stick to the four first ones. So rectangle, oval, rounded and line. The other ones are quite useful, but we have like a really specific case, which we can dive into, you know, in other sessions in the future. I'm going to show you how to use these. And right off the bat, let's see, the menu icon is basically just a hamburger. So it's, you know, a few strips. I would probably go for using rounded or rectangle edges. So let's see if it's around it. I may be going to create something like this. So that's one shape and I would make a fill maybe black no border and then I can just simply make a copy com command or control C and V as a respond and as you can see sketch gives me guides so let's say maybe we're gonna space it at 40 and then make another copy and so now we have our grill our hamburger and an icon for our menu let's say from here, you could also specify, let's say, other bits. So maybe reduce the blackness into a bit more gray so it doesn't look as sharp. Potentially also increase the roundedness of it, like so. As you can see, automatically it looks much more appealing and slick. And maybe just reduce the actual thing, like so, let's say. And boom, you have a menu icon. For the time being, maybe I would also increase the space in it. And let's say if we zoom out, it's always good practice to zoom out to see exactly how it goes. Because you can see it looks pretty good. It's a simple menu icon. And I can actually show you how to make a really quick copy. So let's say maybe it's our menu icon 2. And just maybe reduce the size of it in pixels. Let's say this is going to be 200. And then that is going to be 160. So 1. 60 less like so that's another menu icon you could use in your designs right away and then the third one let's say menu icon 3 could be something like what apple have on their website which is really minimal it's literally just two blocks like so and that's menu icon so it's simple like that you know you use shapes to kind of make something out of nothing I'm going to show you now the interesting bit in the personal icon is going to be because we're going to have to cut out the holes, let's say. So I would start with just shape oval because oval is a shape which you can use it. And I'm going to make it similar dimensions to what we have on the right. But it's all going to be about weight of the icon rather than dimensions. You can always resize, just create a fill. As you can see, I'm just picking a color out of the other one so it's consistent. We're just going to have a box. Well, if it's okay with you, you can use that. But for me, it's like, hmm, it's, you know, let's create an outline and make it the same thickness as our menu icon so we have consistent language across, right? So I can do this thing. So I can copy and paste another oval and make it maybe gray right or you could make it white but that wouldn't cut it out it wouldn't be transparent right so i'm just by eye checking 
that the thickness is the same across the thing. I think we could increase it by 0.5 maybe on both ends. So now it's similar to that. I would need to compare it and maybe drag it and see exactly if it is. It looks like it is. Let me just place it back, snap it back. And you know, if, in a, on a simplest way, you could just simply make it wide and now you have an outline, let's say, which could be something maybe you're looking for, but I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for a bit more in depth, something I can place under the color. So let me just show, demonstrate exactly what I mean. So let's say if I would place a color underneath and make it red, like so, and just drag that layer underneath. You see, it's not transparent. Maybe that's the effect you're looking for. I'm not. So what I can do, I'm just, I can use the shape subtraction tools. So I can select two layers and click subtract and boom, it cut out the shape. Simple as that. Whatever was placed on top got cut out from the underneath. You can also union, unionize it. So let's say if I click reverse and union, Boom, now it became one shape, but inside that combined shape, I have two different objects. How cool is that? You can also intersect, you can difference, you know, those are rare options to use, but you need to play with an experiment and see exactly what you can come up with. But I'm just gonna go subtract because that's what I'm looking for. And now I'm gonna have this O shape, which is pretty cool, right? What I can now do, I can maybe place a, a human icon inside so maybe I can just copy paste the same shape and just resize it like so. And maybe even copy another time like this and just increase it manually like so. So it's a bit more like a body. Now, as you can see, there's of course, there are some differences here. So what I need to do is like I could combine the shape or I can edit it. Now I'm going to edit it and I'm going to show you how it's done. So if you double click any shape and you click in, you're going to have an access to these points, which you can edit. As you can see, if I drag it, I can edit the shape. Now here is where the craft begin. Both shapes collide together. I could just merge these two and it would be one shape. That's pretty cool. But that's where the craft basically begins because you then start to put in different bits like this, for example, maybe that's the effect you're looking for and the icon you're looking for, and it doesn't look too bad. You see the weight sort of compares with the menu icons, and maybe that's the one you are happy with. I mean, I wouldn't be happy because those are way too sharp lines. Uh, maybe you are, so keep it, but I would just go and then edit the other one. And if you click the edit icon up above here, then you're gonna open the same menu as a double click, and maybe you could do something like this. That's what I was looking for. And here I have a personal icon. So it's simple like that. And I can basically, you know, select it. I can unionize it. So now it's one combined shape. And now I can place it anywhere I wish on top of different backgrounds. And it's gonna look amazing. And then, you know, you can edit those points like this. It opens like an editing functionality where you can shape it and kind of master it a little bit more, you know, tweak it here and there. Be precise. If you work with icons, that's essential. And now lastly, let's make another icon, which is gonna be our, let's say, sound icon. And here I'm gonna use multiple shapes. So I'm gonna use, let's say, a rounded shape like this for a speaker. And I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna make it a bit rounder, but only the, let's say, those edges. So I selected that, that bits, boom. As you can see, I selected those dots, or I could select that and then edit the round and that's like this. You see, you're coming up with new shapes but I don't need those two bits being rounded. I can just do this. I could then take another shape like so. And again, replicate the outlook. And if some, this is something I'm looking for, I can just unionize it, boom, I have a new shape. If not, I can just, you know, delete it. But what I like to do, I like to play with shapes on the actual um, vector level, like so. So let's say you can add extra points, like so. And as you can see, I'm playing by eye. That's because I can readjust it anytime, like so. But then you can kind of like play with it and just thinking of the shape I want to get out of it. Boom, boom, boom. Maybe that's the shape I'm lo looking for. 
like so, so it, it's not too drastic for the users to look at. And boom, as you can see, the bottom bit is a bit too tall and I can readjust it a little bit. Again, it's all by eye, so you know, you need to edit it. But that's, that's about it. Then you have a shape already done for your icon. Now next, what you could do is to basically, I would just replicate the shape. I would colorize it in white, let's say, and just resize it a bit. That's at least my workflow to create an icon, so to cut out the shapes. It, as you can see, it's not perfect, but the next step is where you're gonna make it perfect. I would subtract it, and now I have a new shape, and all I have to do is just go inside into the top layer and then start adjusting it. And boom, I kind of adjusted it. As you can see, it's not perfect by any means. It, I, I would have to adjust it to fit that scheme of a look and feel to make that thickness on it, which is easy to do. But for now, I think it's gonna be okay. Um, especially, you know, just being time conscious, I don't wanna bore you to death. I just wanna put like the last bit so you know exactly how it's done. And I'm gonna add another few rounded shapes like this, let's say. You could keep it quite static looking. You know, let's say this is the adjustment of that and I'm just gonna make it the same thickness as the other, like so. You could do something like this. So let's say, imagine that this is my tallest shape. Maybe I'm just gonna have two shapes for showing the sound for this pictogram, like so. I say it's sort of okay, it aligns pretty well, you can align it better. What if I want to do it rounded, let's say. So again, I would click twice, click into it, and take a couple of points. I'm just looking by eye exactly where the center is. If I press shift, it gives me a center automatically, as you can see. So it's simple as that. And then I can just drag it out to the point where I want it to be. It's like this, let's say. And this would make a good chevron, but now you see you have a point type which is quite important. If you haven't worked with this Illustrator or Photoshop, you might know about this. But if you check mirrored and check it on the actual point rather than random one, boom, it rounds in automatically. And I could just select that, that thing and just increase it so it rounds even more and do so for the other one too like so, so it thins it about. And now I have sort of like a banana looking thing, as you can see. So I can basically just go on, just make a couple of them, maybe reduce the shape a little bit like so, but then I need to also reduce the thinness so it looks a bit more natural, like so, let's say. And boom, you have sort of a couple of shapes of a sound. And you know, maybe this is an icon you're looking for. But this is, gives you some workflow ideas or how to craft, let's say, pictograms from scratch or how to do things. Because, you know, in reality, it's not that hard. Um, you just need to play with it and spend a little bit of time on each. The more you do, the quicker you're gonna become. But Sketch is kind of like what you, the best bits from Illustrator, Photoshop and other programs. And I hope it helps you because we are gonna step up and we're gonna increase the, you know, the capacity and try to play with these options even more as we go. But as per usual, if you like this video, give a like, subscribe to this channel, smash that button of a like, why not? Smash the button of the subscription as well and stay tuned for more material. I'll see you next time.